combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we have another Jimmy Rants episode all ready for you guys here today. If you're new to watching me on Instagram, or if you're not watching on Instagram, go follow me on Instagram at Livin' Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. And once you're there, you can follow me. I do these Jimmy Rants episodes in the morning and then in the afternoon, pretty much on a daily basis. Sometimes life gets in the way and I'm not able to do two a day, but I try to do at least one a day. And so you can follow me and watch these live and interact with me. So you'll hear me interact with people a little bit later on in this episode. They're down there talking to me on uh, Instagram Live. Then you can watch the replay on Instagram for 24 hours. And then we house all the videos of the Jimmy Rants episodes at jimmyrants.com on YouTube so that you can go and check those out. If you just want to go on YouTube and type in Jimmy Rants, you'll find all of them there as well. And then coming very soon, we're going to debut the brand new Jimmy Rants podcast. So all that housekeeping out of the way to get to today's Jimmy Rant. And it's something that has been on my heart and mind for a very long time because I used to weigh 410 pounds and was in really, really bad shape in my health. I wasn't making good dietary choices at the time. Obviously, you don't get to 400 plus pounds for a guy or 300 plus pounds for a woman without making really, really bad choices in your diet and or having some other issues going on that would affect that. So I, for the longest time, had to deal with the stereotype as an obese man that you're, because you're fat, you are lazy, you are stupid, you are uh, not a hard worker at all, you don't know how to control yourself, you have no willpower, all of these things come up anytime you start discussing uh, people that are larger than they need to be. And so this stereotype of fat people being all of these things that I just described, it's very real. And I mean, you got to catch yourself sometimes when you see people and you go, oh my gosh, you know, there needs to be something done to help that person. And I, I could see people were looking at me in that way a lot, um, that they need to do something. And so the stereotype is that they're not doing anything. So let me give you a little insider baseball. And a lot of you guys that have gone through a weight loss transformation, you'll relate to a lot of this. So when people look at you when you're that big and you can already tell <laughs> what they're thinking, you can almost see the little bubble above their head that, that says, you know, go, go cut your fat, cut your calories, go run on a treadmill, lay off the, the hamburgers, you know, all of these kind of stereotypes of what they're thinking that people in that situation are doing. When in fact, those people are probably their own worst critics. When someone is that big and they're trying to do something about it, they're still big. And so what you see on the outside, you don't understand what's going on up here and what they're trying to do to help themselves. And it really discourages a lot of people, especially if they start like on a ketogenic plan. Let's say a woman starts at 300 pounds and she starts keto and she loses 50 pounds eating a ketogenic diet and loses it like, you know, pretty good, like three months, uh, loses three. 50 pounds. That's pretty darn good. And yet people would still look at her and go, well, you're still fat. Why is that? That keto is not working. You're still fat. And I'm going, okay, let's give people a little bit of credit of where they are in their journey and not be so judgmental. I, I, I think this is what's lacking in this whole discussion 
of people dealing with obesity and how they're going to handle it. Um, it's these lingering stereotypes of fat people. Plus, there's this notion that if you eat the perfect diet for you, you should get down to your ideal weight and there will never be any troubles with your weight ever again. And of course, that's basically ignoring biology. It's ignoring the damage that has been done prior to whatever the chosen diet plan is that got you down in weight. There's just so many moving parts to this topic and some of them having nothing at all to do with the food you put in your mouth. And so you could have the most pristine diet. You could be doing all the right things in your physical activity. You could be doing even lifestyle things uh, and getting those under control. But stress can be an issue. Um, sleeplessness can be an issue. Uh, hormonal imbalances. Taking some medications, which some people have to do for various disease states that they're in. Those things can interfere with weight loss and can make it look like this person's not doing anything. And so then that fat person gets judgment. And this is what's not talked about within this realm of nutritional health. These people are trying. A lot of them aren't. A lot aren't. So don't get me wrong that if you see a obese or overweight person, um, that they're all automatically trying. Most are not, but they're not because they've been discouraged by all these stereotypes of what people in their situation are like. And so it's, it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy. But a lot of them are. And I was one of those people uh, for many years. I would always, quote, try to do something for my weight. And, and I did. Uh, low-fat diets, and I was angry, and just the frustration that came from that. So when I found a low-carb diet in 2004 was when I implemented it, it was the most incredible thing. I was losing weight, like, really rapidly. Um, I want to say it was like 30 pounds the first month, 40 pounds in the second month, 100 pounds in the first 100 days. And the most amazing thing to me was how invisible I still felt despite being so large and, and still losing weight, but I was still large. So people wouldn't pay much attention to me. But as soon as I hit a hundred pounds lost, suddenly I become visible and all these people start talking to me and I'm going, okay, what, what changed? Why are you suddenly talking to me? Was the stereotype that because I weighed so much before, I couldn't have an intelligent conversation with you um, and I can't carry on uh, my my day-to-day -day life. It, it, it's just amazing to me. I just, I think back to those days of where I was invisible at 410 pounds, but then suddenly losing 100 pounds made me visible because, well, you finally gotten your willpower under control. No, I didn't. If I had great willpower, I would have never gotten to 410 pounds to begin with. What I had was want power. I wanted to be healthier. I wanted to lose weight. And then eventually the goal became getting healthier. And so breaking through these stereotypes of fat people, we need to stop looking at people for their weight. Start looking at them for their intelligence, what they bring to the table creative-wise. Um, and... By golly, I am one of the hardest working people you'll probably ever meet in your life. And I've been that way even when I was 400 plus pounds and I'm still that way today. I do five podcasts a week, about to start a sixth one. Uh, I do. I have five books uh, in the next year and a half if you count the one that just came out this week. Um, I'm constantly thinking of new ways to get out content and to provide a service to people. I'm also answering emails and calling people and encouraging people and doing all the kind of grunt work of trying to be there for people. Does that sound like a lazy man? Does that sound like someone who's stupid? And yet that's the stereotype that lingers. So again, as I've said in other Jimmy rants, the way you break this uh, chain of what everybody else does is you stand out, you do something different. And what I want you to do uh, when you see someone who might be a little bit larger, I want you to be a friend to them. I want you to love them. I want you to be a buddy to them and encourage them and give them hope. 
Because a lot of people in that situation don't feel hope at all. They feel helplessness and even desperation, which is what leads them to do all these kind of drastic measures in their health. My, my mom, for example, had gastric bypass surgery because she was so desperate to lose weight. And she did. She lost weight, lost a lot of weight. Um, she got that done a couple weeks before I started the Atkins diet. Um, and she lost a lot of weight, had a few complications from dehydration and malnutrition, but did pretty well. And then she gained all the weight back and then some. And it's just, it's so disheartening that people turn to these extremes because they feel like they have no hope. So maybe you today will be that hope for someone in their life. And you can help break down these stereotypes of fat people that unfortunately still pervade today. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Hi, Jimmy. I bought your book yesterday. Looking forward to reading it. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, yes, Kat, I knew you would uh, love this one today. That used to happen to me when I was overweight. People judged me and had no idea how hard I was trying. And that's the point I want to underscore here today. If someone is obese, they know it. You don't have to tell them. You don't have to tell them that they're fat. You don't have to tell them that they need to do something about their health or they may not live very long. These are all axiomatic things that every single overweight and obese person already knows. What they need is encouragement, hope, inspiration, and education because sometimes the right information for them is not getting to them because they're hearing all these voices about what they should do and then it's getting reinforced by the doctors. Go on a low-fat diet and then you have to go see a dietitian because they weigh a certain amount and the health insurance plan makes them go see a dietitian. What do they say? Cut your fat, cut your calories, eat more or eat more healthy whole grains, uh, exercise more. All of these things that could be the exact wrong thing for them, they're getting reinforced. So what they need is proper information, which is what I try to be uh, is a purveyor of all that kind of information for people. Weight is such a mental game. Thank you, L. L. Merrant. Um, yes, it really is. And, and people identify other people uh, based on their size. There's a lot of people that do that. And I wonder how conscientious that is. Uh, like people consciously think about people's weight. I mean, when I look at someone, I see their character. I see their smile. I see who and what they are about. I rarely look at someone from their weight. And it could be just because of my own uh, history that that's not something that I really focus in on. Do you notice when someone is extremely large? Obviously you do, but my heart bleeds for those people and I so want to be an encouragement to them and let them know it's going to be okay and give them um, you know, any kind of encouragement that will help them through their day. Keep doing you, Jimmy. Thank you, Create Pure Health. You're one of the hardest working people I know. Thank you, Kat. I, I do work hard and I'm passionate and, and people often say, well, you need to get all of your weight and health and everything under control before you get uh, online and start talking and doing podcasts and writing books. You need to get yourself under control. I've heard that quite a bit from different people um, before you start educating. And I'm going, is the information any less important simply because I still have weight on my body? No. Keto is still an effective modality for people to get healthy. So part of why I think I still have weight on my body is the stress of doing all the work. So I am working on ways to alleviate that, um, outsource to other people, maybe hire some different people to do parts in my business that can take some of that off of me so I can then dedicate more time to doing stress reduction. But they're not going to shut me up. I mean, I have too much passion for this topic um, and getting the word out. And I think God has uh, given me a lot of natural talents of writing and communicating and teaching that I would be squandering those abilities if I didn't use them in the ways that I do use them. So I will not be silent. I will not uh, shut up until the good Lord decides to take me home. 
So many failed attempts contribute to people giving up. So it looks like they're quitting, but they aren't. They just don't know, have the right info. My doctor put me on a low calorie, low fat diet and it was a fail. Yeah. And, and Kat, that's exactly what happens so, so often. It just frustrates me because a lot of overweight and obese people are doing exactly what they're told to do. Cut your fat, cut your calories. Then they're miserable. Then you get this whole idea, well, fat people are angry and they're, well, they're angry because they got to eat a freaking low fat diet because that's what they're being told is healthy for them. And so we're feeding them the very diet that's going to make them angry. So yeah, it's one reason I love keto so much is you get, it's the non-angry diet. You can basically give somebody bacon and eggs uh, cooked in butter with an avocado and they are so chill, so calm and it's delicious and it actually nourishes their body and then they can go out and and actually be successful for the first time in their life. It has br brought so much hope for so many people that have been discouraged for so many years. Um, it's just disheartening that they have to go through all the muckety muck of the system to try to get to what the good information is. We don't have to be perfect before we share and help others. Perfection should not be the requirement and it is not the requirement. Maybe that's a whole nother Jimmy Rants cat where I talk about um, not being perfect before you start sharing. And I, I say it often in my work that if you have some kind of story to share, then you need to share it. If you're naturally a writer, then you need to be writing. If you're naturally someone who likes to talk, then you need to be talking. If you like being on video like this, then you need to be doing videos. Use the talents that you have because together we're all making a difference in this world. Uh, my heart voted, motivated me to start a weight loss group on Facebook to support and motivate people no matter how or what they eat. That's great, Create Pure Health. And I think a it's kind of a non-denominational group, it sounds like, uh, non-diet denominational group. Um, and I love that. I, I think people need support. Sometimes they need tough love, but for the most part, people need support and they need encouragement and then they, they need education. What they don't need is you're doing it all wrong. So if you choose to do a low carb, high fat diet, no, you need to eat higher protein and healthy whole grains. That's not going to help anybody. So kudos to you. That's awesome. Uh, D town vapors. Thank you for your commitment to health. Thank you. I am not going anywhere. Try, try as they may. By the way, they did try to hack me again, uh, yesterday on my Instagram and I caught them right before, uh, they were able to delete the new account. So yeah, somebody does not like that. I speak truth. We are all a work in progress. If we all waited for perfection, nothing would ever get done. My faith helps a lot to get me going. Uh, God has a plan for me and I need to get healthy to do my part. Nancy, that is, that is great. And I'm right there with you. Um, and I feel like I have been called to do what I do at, at this time. Amy Marm Brewster, as a bariatric nurse and a patient, I still feel like a failure at times. It's hard to dump all those old feelings. And, and that's another Jimmy Rance episode at some point. People think when you lose weight that everything up here changes too. Nope. You still feel like a fat person. When I dropped 180 pounds in 2004, up here, I was still the 410 pound guy. I was. So I might save those thoughts for another Jimmy Rants for another day. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. As always, head on over to JimmyRants.com. You can watch all of the replays of my rants on YouTube. And if you're not following me on Instagram and you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to it on the Jimmy Rants podcast, head on over to Instagram at Living Low Carb Man. You can watch these lives. We do them generally in the morning and the evening, Eastern Standard Time, so that you can watch live and interact. You can also... Uh, watch the replay there for 24 hours. We're also going to come out with a brand new Jimmy Rants podcast coming very soon. Uh, stay tuned, you guys. That's going to be awesome. Extreme weight loss does a number on our, on our brains. It does, Kat. And Kat has lost well over 100 pounds. So she knows from when she speaks, when you lose that much weight, um, 
your brain doesn't catch up. It takes several years. I think after I lost 180 pounds, it took me about three years before I really wrapped my head around, oh, oh, I'm smaller now. Uh, that sounds so weird to people that haven't had that kind of experience, but the brain doesn't catch up. You know what the brain does? The brain remembers all of those experiences when you were bigger and it's taking in all of the new experiences now that you're so-called normal weight again. Um, man, I got so much to say on this that I could Jimmy rants so many topics on this, but I'll be back with more Jimmy rants soon. The thanks, so thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye.